This video is going to cover the Access Chapter 1 Guided Project. Again, make sure that you get your start file from SimNet. You're going to need to hit Enable Content, and then we're going to hit File, Save As, Save Database As, Save As again, and make sure that you save this in a spot where you're going to be able to find it when it's time to upload so you don't accidentally upload the wrong file. I have all my files, again, on my desktop, in my ITC 122 student data files, in Access, in Chapter 1. I am going to go ahead and hit save and I'm not changing the file name at all. I'm going to go ahead and hit enable content. And the first thing the directions asked us to do is to create a table. So we're going to click create. And when we click table, regular table, it's going to create it in data sheet view. We're not creating it in design view, which would have been the next option over. So this is that default table that kind of pops up. We're going to click, double click the ID field here, and we're going to type in member ID. Go ahead and hit enter. This is an uh, automatically assigned as our uh, primary key for the table. We're going to leave this data type auto number and we are going to go ahead and get into that uh, design view so we can go ahead and add the rest of the fields. But before we can get into design view, we do have to save it. So we're going to hit control S and we're going to type in members and then hit enter and get into design view by clicking the design view up top. Um, so we have member ID, we have that auto number, it is also the unique identifier of the table or the primary key. And then we're going to start adding in um, the rest of the uh, fields that are listed. So we already did this member ID and added it. And then it has you add first name, but it's still in that data sheet view, but I already switched over to design view just to make things a little easier. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add first name, last name, and then we're going to type in all of these fields here. And we also want each of these to have a different data or all to have that short text data type, except for hyperlink. So I've already typed in all of my field names and I've chosen each of those different data types. So we can see that Email address has a hyperlink data type, and there are no spaces in these current field names. And we've also uh, make sure that everything's capitalized, make sure you proof it, and it lines up exactly with what is on my screen and exactly with uh, what is in the directions. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit Control S. We don't need to type in members because we've already named that table uh, in I. Now we're going to be on number three and we're going to start adding some of the different captions. So we're going to click on member ID and the caption down here is going to be member ID with a space. And then we're looking at adding first name as a caption for first name. So I'm going to put this in a split screen view, first name, and then we're going to go down to caption first space name. And we're going to change the field size to 20 according to I. And then we're going to change the remaining fields in the table. So we're going to go to the last name and this is going to be a field size of 25 with the caption last space name. And then we're going to go to address. Field size is going to be 45. City field size is going to be 25. State field size is going to be 2. Then we're going to go down to zip code and we're going to change the field size to five. Then we're going to go and add a caption for zip code and it's going to be in all caps. We're going to type in zip, then email address. We're going to type in a caption email and we're not going to change the field size at all for email or anything like that since it's a hyperlink data type. And then for cell phone, we're going to change the field size to 12. And then we're going to add the caption cell space phone. Then we're going to go to number four. We're going to start adding in all of the different records to our table. So I'm going to hit control S on my table and go to data sheet view. And with the auto number data type, it'll automatically pop up a one here. So I'm just going to hit tab and then we're going to type in that first name. Geneva and then tab and then we're going to start filling in all of the fields Lingle 1850 Cameron Park CA and then we're going to do the table that's down here. 
After you're done typing everything in, you will want to drag across and then make sure that you auto fit the entire thing. So you can double check, make sure that there aren't any spelling errors, make sure that everything's capitalized, it's supposed to be capitalized, look for any spaces or anything that you missed. Uh, once you've completed that, then our next step is to go to the zip column and we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to field width and this is going to be seven. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then that's going to be 5D. And then 56 wants us to center align it. And then we're going to go to the state column. <clears throat> and then for the state column, it wants us to auto fit it. Um, we already auto fitted it, so we can skip that step. And then we're going to center it. Then we're going to be on K and we're going to go ahead and apply an alternate row color, that blue gray text to lighter 80%. So I'm going to click the top left corner and we're going to go into our alternate row color and we're going to go blue gray text to lighter 80%. Then we're going to go ahead and then it asks you to go ahead and save that table and we're going to close it out and we're going to import another table just like we already did. So we've um, in uh, the pause and practice. So we're going to close that out. And then once the table is closed out, again, don't close out of the whole database, just the table. We're going to go up to the external data tab, new data source from file, and then we're going to choose Excel. And then here's where you're going to navigate to your access chapter one folder, or the file is also in resources in SimNet. And it's going to be called members-01. We're going to go ahead and append a copy to the already existing table, hit OK, Next, Finish, and Close. Those steps are going to take you all the way down through number six. And then it asks us in number eight to do a couple of different things. We select the state column, so we're going to open this back up, and it wants us to hide the state column. So you can left click, then right click, and you can hit Hide Fields. So we're just practicing a couple of things here. And then it has us uh, hit save. So we're going to hit control S still in this table. And then we're going to sort the members table. So we're going to click on the city field and then we apply an A to Z sort. And then we remove that sort. So I'm going to go back to the home tab and hit remove sort. Then we're going to click the zip column and we're going to click and drag the pointer to move the zip column to the left of last name. And then we are going to click anywhere to deselect it. And then we drag it back um, where it was before. So we're gonna click zip and then we're gonna drag it to last of, right back to the left of last name. Then it has us, like I said, click and hold it with the pointer displayed, drag the pointer to the last name column, and then release the pointer. So we're gonna make it look like the picture here. So we're gonna click on zip, we're dragging and selecting. Actually, I'm gonna click somewhere in here first, then get that down arrow and drag and select zip and last name. And we're gonna use the ascending sort order on the uh, sort and filter group on the home tab to sort it. So since zip is first, it's actually going to sort by zip first, then it'll sort by last name. So it takes precedent. Then it has you go in and remove the sort, and then we're going to remove the zip column to the right of city. So we're going to hit remove sort, then click on zip, and then we're going to make sure you're only on zip, and we're going to move it back to the right of city. Then it asks us to filter the members. We're going to select 916 and the uh, member ID, or I'm sorry, in the cell phone column. So we're going to go over to 916 and then we're going to go up to the selection option and we're going to do it contains 916 so that it filters anything um, that contains it. Actually, it's beginning with. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. So we're going to get the same results. We're going to go ahead and clear that filter. So I'm going to hit clear all filters underneath advanced. And then we are in number 11. We use a text filter. 
So we are going to click the drop down menu to the right of email and we're going to use uh, contains and we're going to type in Gmail. So we're going to click here and we're going to go down to text filters and we're going to contains and we're going to type in Gmail and hit OK. And then you can go and um, toggle the filter and then we're going to go back into advanced and hit clear all filters. So it's all uh, information that you are just kind of practicing at this point. There's no end result. Um, does have you close out of the table and then review the completed members table again. And we aren't saving any changes. So that way um, the state is probably still hidden. So that is the only thing I'm seeing here that's going to be different uh, as an actual change in this. So we're going to leave state hidden when we go to submit it. Um, but we are going to add a couple of these options into our file uh, database properties here. So let's go to File, Info, View and Edit Database Properties, and we're going to get those filled out. So we're going to type in American River Members in the title. And then our company is going to be ARCC, and then our author <clears throat> is going to be Taylor Mathos. So we're going to type in Taylor Mathos. And then the company is ARCC. Once we hit OK, and again, we exit with that back arrow, it's going to just automatically be saved. So you can close out the, your entire um, table. I'm going to hit no to save the changes because that was the last uh, change that we made was just, again, that um, hidden state. So we don't need to worry about that because it's still going to be hidden. And I want to, I'm curious if it is going to flag that. So let's go ahead and submit that. I'm going to hit upload my file. And our import was saved because we saved it since our last import. And um, from here, you should be good to upload.